Hey there everyone, this is Troy checking in with my recent flute making activities. I'm here sitting in this really amazing spot actually, which I'll just share. There's a river, a beautiful river there, and I've just had, had a cuppa. And actually, there's alpacas. Hopefully you can make that little guy out. Alpacas and ducks and geese just in the adjacent paddock. And it's kind of relevant that there are alpacas here because these flutes that I want to share with you, uh, they do have a South American origin in their voicing, in the mouthpiece. That's a, a South American design on the Quinacho or Kenna. So I've got a couple of recent ones that I've made just in the last few days. I've got actually quite a, a handful there to, to share and to actually sell. Uh, but these are a couple and these are the new bindings that I've just got in um, from Squirrely Stash. This really beautiful like instrument quality nylon threading that I'm using to bind the flutes up now. So <laughs> I got this one. I like the design online, this one. It's actually called, is it Quetzalcoatl? Quetzalcoatl or <laughs> however you say that, uh, that's what this design is uh, entitled. And it's a bit of a like an Aztec, Meso, Mesoamerican kind of vibe, the colour. Uh, so yeah, so they're two of the, the current batch. And I'm really getting more and more happy with the making process. I've really got the, the, di the dimensions of the flutes down pat. Uh, even the, the ending of some of these now, I'm cutting them on the nodes. You can see that beautiful little flaring where the node ends and I cut right through the node and it produces this beautiful um, grain in the bamboo that is just stunning actually when you put oil on it. Um, and of course I'm still burning the hole so that produces a really beautiful finish uh, which you just don't get when you're drilling so anyway without further ado I might actually play one of these things so it's a pentatonic minor scale five notes <laughs> So that's the voicing and the, the tune of this little guy. Um, there, I'm finding that the harmonics, because I've got the dimensions going really nice with the, the diameter against the length, I've got the ratios really nice now. And I'm finding the harmonics are getting better. So harmonics are basically different levels uh, just by overblowing with all the fingers on. So there you go, that's, uh, that's one of the, the ones I've made this week. Uh, another one, this is a deeper one, and this is a beautiful, kind of a royal uh, gold. It's got gold and deep purple, and it's got like a little lavender strip in there too, so really loving the, that. Uh, this one's a, the last one was a D minor actually, and this one's a C minor. But you'll notice the deeper, bigger tone of the C minor.
there you go, that's the C minor. And uh, you'll see them together. The D is actually uh, quite a bit shorter and quite a bit narrower also. So, yeah, there you go. So the bamboo always produces something different different tone, a different voicing, and uh, a totally different breath dynamic. So that's the current current status of affairs with the flutes. Um, I'll be putting some more videos out. Actually, I'm about to start a formal online store with these flutes. So I'll put some links in this post once that's occurred, and then you'll be able to just go through there'll be a video for each flute of me playing it so you can really get a feel for what's resonating with you um, and then you'll be able to just click and buy and I'll post it out to you uh, lesson wise you know there is a learning curve with these flutes of course because you're getting your mouth armature going which is the shape and the little getting a little hole there just to channel that little beam of air does stop a lot of people from learning this style of flute which of course I understand there is an investment of time and energy and focus that goes along with um, learning something new that requires that level of intensity around it but to be honest um, it's it's kind of a confidence thing and how I I approached learning these instruments. I went on a trip to Peru in 2015 and as part of that trip I I purchased a number of South American Kenna flutes which I had no idea how to play but I could get a basic sound. I was getting like a not even that good. Um, I was getting a sound out of them and that was enough for me to go, I'm going to make this work. So I did make it work. And how I did that was I just had them sitting around the house, had one sitting on the bench at home and I would pick it up maybe five, sometimes longer, 10 times a day and have these little micro sessions of about five minutes where I was just building that capacity and that those muscles around playing that instrument and getting that sound and gradually over time my system did adjust to being able to to do that skill um, and and I firmly believe it was because I was having that regular check-in several times a day of course it wasn't every day there were days where I was out and about and had activities going and I didn't touch the flute at all but when I was home and had the capacity, I would check in with it several times a day and then it became a, an integral part of my routine actually. Um, anytime I was at a bit of a, a loose end, I would pick the flute up and, and have another go. And so this went on, you know, it did improve mostly, a lot of improvement in the first few months. But then I kind of hit a plateau on that instrument where I couldn't really get the sound any better and some one unexpected gift out of learning to make these kind of flutes uh, was that my playing of the of this it actually took me to another level where i figured out through making these and playing them and, and playing all different types of flutes something just clicked into place of getting that that shape with the the mouth there and pulling the cheeks tight to, to, to narrow the slit which increases the airspeed of the air going through the, the slit because it's smaller which gives you a greater economy to be able to hit those high notes so the low notes are actually pretty simple that's pretty easy I'm leaning pretty gently into that but then to hit the top octave, you've got to lean in quite strongly. So what would happen for me is, I'd be playing the, the instrument, I'd go through the bottom octave and then I'd get to the top, maybe one or two notes and then it would cut out. I literally couldn't come up with 
the airspeed and the intensity required to maintain the flute in the higher notes. And what I figured out was to pull those lips tight, this gap gets narrow and the airspeed goes up and then suddenly I was able to maintain the higher notes. So just by a very subtle like pulling of that tight, the gap can halve and which means the airspeed doubles and suddenly without leaning in harder with my breath, I was able to hit these high notes and that's the that's what I teach in the, the videos that I've made up for these flutes. Uh, there's a beginner videos of just getting the sound and then there's a refined video for how to get the, the higher octave and how to um, get the armature really spot on. And of course, it is specific to this style of flute, but you pick up a side blown flute and you can apply these concepts directly onto any of those kind of flutes that you wanna learn. So that's about it for me today. I wasn't expecting to share about that. Um, but I really like this style of flute. Um, normal, normal kenners or normal flutes are a major scale, which is a, a seven note scale. So it's all fingers on is one note, two, three, four, five, six. And then there's usually oh yeah, one, two, three, you use all the fingers on a, uh, the six holes and the seventh note is all fingers on. So that's a traditional kenna and a traditional flute. But with these flutes, it's really good to, um, to learn on as a starting point because there's only four holes. So, and I've put an extra hole in, but you can never lift that finger and not miss it. So it's actually really easy to, to get that, you know, that four holes going on the five note pentatonic scale. So that's, and there is a back hole, but you can choose not to ever lift that off and just overblow. So there's your five notes. So it's actually super easy, and it's a shakuhachi, actually Japanese design. That's how they design the shak shakuhachis. So anyway, I think I've rabbited on enough. Thanks for watching. And if you want to buy one of these flutes or, or um, have, a, have some lessons or anything like that, if you want to engage with this style of flute, just shoot me a message um, from this post and, and we can take it from there. So the nature, the river, the alpacas, the flutes and myself, um, have a great day and we'll talk again soon.